When it comes down to it, victory or defeat in Super Auto Pets is determined by one thing and one thing only. Who runs out of units first? It doesn't matter if you win by 5 animals, or if you win by a single one with 1 health. At the end of the day, a win is a win. Which means, in order to win, all you have to do is make sure that, on average, each one of your units take out more than one of the enemy's units. If, for example, you can make sure that one of your units take out two of the enemies, and have the rest trade evenly, then you win. This is the basic principle of trading, and it should inform all of your other decisions, from which units to buy to where you place your units. If you can assemble a team that trades favorably against your opponents, you win. But of course, that's easier said than done. After all, trading is somewhat of an abstract concept. Even if you understand it in theory, when you're playing an actual game, it still takes a lot of experience to figure out what will or won't lead to good trades. This video will cover ideas and strategies that make use of trading to give you an advantage in the game, but it's still up to you to decide when you should use each strategy. Because every situation is different, and there's always going to be a factor of luck involved, experience will make you better at using these strategies over time. So how do you win trades? Piece of cake, just build a bigger, stronger team. Right. But the problem with that is, everyone gets the same amount of resources to spend per turn. You get 10 gold, whatever's in the shop, and the passage of time to apply buffs and stuff. Yes, you can buy better animals or have better RNG, but there's only a limited amount of value that you can squeeze out of each turn. Which means that, on average, your team will be at about the same power level as everyone else's team on that turn, especially as the average player is getting better and better at the game. This is where trading comes in. Because if, for the value of 3 gold, you can take out a unit that your opponent has spent 30 gold on, then the rest of your units should be better than the rest of theirs, right? Since everyone is granted the same amount of resources, if you can spend a tiny amount of your own to nullify a lot of your opponents, then you can use your resulting resource advantage to secure a victory. Using a weaker unit to kill a stronger unit is what we call trading up. The quintessential example of this is the scorpion. For just 3 gold, your scorpion can take out the enemy's strongest unit, if positioned correctly. But this is also the scorpion's biggest weakness, the fact that it is only good at trading up. Due to the scorpion's slow stats and how late it becomes available, it is very rare that it can take out more than the single enemy unit. That is to say, even if you do run 5 scorpions, the best outcome you can wish for is still just a draw. In order to win, you still have to be able to use one of your units to kill many of the enemies. Your strongest unit should be capable of trading with multiple units. It should trade down multiple times. This is the basic idea behind trading well. Always aim to either trade up or trade down multiple times. This is why you should usually place your strongest animal in front. A unit will hit just as hard regardless of if it has 1 health or 50. So if it survives its fight against the first unit, it'll still do its full damage to the second one. If you position your strongest unit in front and your opponent does not, then you are likely able to clean up a few of your opponent's weaker units before still putting your biggest hit into the opponent's biggest unit. In this situation, you've effectively absorbed the damage of the weaker units for free. But of course, this only works if you actually had the bigger, stronger unit. Since the enemy is also likely to place their strongest unit in front, if theirs happen to be bigger, then it's you who will lose out a lot on the trade. Whether or not you should put your strongest unit in the front depends on how strong it is compared to your opponent's units. If you think it is likely to be stronger, then put it in front. The mechanics of this game heavily favor having a bigger unit, even if just by a little. A slight increase in stats can often lead to a huge advantage in combat. For example, if you had a 10-10 unit and your opponent has a 9-9, then your unit will be able to knock out your opponents, and then still do 10 damage to the next unit. This means that you were able to land your biggest hit of 10 twice, whereas your opponent was only able to do their biggest hit of 9 a single time. An initial stat difference of just 1-1 can lead to you being an entire unit up on your opponent. So what do you do if you don't think your strongest unit can compete with the opponents? In that situation, your best bet is to try and find a unit that is good at trading up, and place it in front. In the best case, like with a scorpion, you can knock out the opponent's strongest unit. But in the more likely scenarios, when you can't just knock out the unit in one hit, you can try to at least weaken your opponent's strongest unit, to give your own strongest unit a better chance to survive. In general, the units that are good at trading up are scorpions, units with high damage relative to their health, for example, the badger, the ox, 
and units buff with Dodo. Units with Melon Armor, Stake, or Meat Attack are also good at trading up. And the units that are good for trading down many times are any unit with high stats, units with a lot of health relative to their attack, like the crab, units that have on hurt or on knockout effects, for example the blowfish, the rhino, or the hippo, units that can spawn other units, like the turkey, fly, deer, sheep, and the rooster, units with garlic armor and melon armor. It's a good idea to keep a balance of both types of units and play to your strengths according to the shops you get. This is especially true in the early and mid game. If you already have a strong unit that has the potential to trade with multiple units, keep buffing it. Otherwise, while you look for a unit that can do that, grab a few units that are good at trading up to keep yourself alive. Here's another question. If a 3531 unit with melon armor fights a 5050 unit with melon armor, who wins? It's actually a draw. Due to the melon armor giving you an extra 20 health, the effective stats of the animal are 3551 and 5070, which means that after one hit, the weaker animal would be at 351 and the stronger at 5035, and the next hit will have them knocking each other out. This means that once a unit with melon armor goes past 3531, putting more buffs on it may lead to diminishing returns. Of course, in many situations, more stats are better, but depending on your build, you may want to prioritize putting your buffs on the other animals instead. If you have a stronger unit, consider putting the 3531 in front so that it can trade up with the enemy's strongest unit and pave the way for your actual carry to clean up. Earlier, we talked about how it's often a good idea to put your strongest unit in front. In the late game, however, things might change. You may want to move your strongest unit to the second position instead and put a weaker unit in front. The reason for doing so is so that you can counter your opponent's melon armor. If you let your weaker unit crack the melon armor, your strongest unit has a chance to knock out the enemy unit without fainting. Furthermore, not putting your strongest unit in front is also a good way to counter scorpions, which usually go in front. Of course, in every one of the situations we've gone over, it's possible that your enemy has the same idea, so nothing is guaranteed to work. However, I do feel like using these strategies have given me a better chance of success, so I've shared them here. It's also possible that as the player base gets better, the meta will change. For example, as more people start to put a weaker unit in front to block scorpions, more people will tend to place their scorpions further behind. The meta will shift constantly, but as long as you keep thinking about everything in terms of trading favorably, you will be able to adapt to it. Thank you everyone for watching and let me know if these tips were useful for you. For more Super Auto Pets content, subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitch. I stream on both platforms and I'll be putting out more videos in the future. Alright, see you guys next time. Bye bye.